Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're going to make saffron infused cheese. Well, I've been told that this recipe is based on a Sicilian cheese, which I cannot find the name of. I got the recipe from uh, cheesemaking.com, uh, from New England Cheese Making Supply, and Jim Wallace was the author of the recipe. Anyway, it looks extremely, extremely yellow, um, and this is because of the addition of the saffron, and I've also put in black peppercorns. So let's check out how we made saffron infused cheese. So the milk we're using today is Inglenook Dairy's unhomogenized milk. Uh, it's delightful and sets a really good curd. So the ingredients are 10 litres of whole milk or full cream milk, uh, unhomogenized as preferred, an eighth of a teaspoon of Floridanica, an eighth of a teaspoon of thermophilic culture, a half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of cool non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of liquid rennet, single strengths diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. You'll also need half a gram of saffron, half a tablespoon of black peppercorns and an 18% brine solution. And as you can see there, I'm filling up the pot with the milk. There was a little bit of uh, thick cream on top, so I stirred that in, uh, trying not to break the surface of the milk. Anyway, heat up your milk to 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. There's still a bit of cream on top, so I'm trying to stir that in there. So meanwhile, while you're waiting for your milk to heat up, we're going to toast the peppercorns for two minutes until they start moving around. And you can see there on the video what I'm talking about moving around. They just start to jump around like jelly beans or jumping beans. And then you've got a fair idea that they're cooked. But move them all the time because they will burn on one side and you don't want that to happen. Nothing worse than burnt peppercorns. What this does, it releases the, uh, the uh, scent of the spices and uh, makes them more aromatic. Okay, so just I've got the heat turned off there. So we're going to put those in a container for later use, for when we uh, fill up our basket with our curds. Now I've got my saffron there, I just bought it from the supermarket. It didn't really smell very much. So I probably prefer some fresher saffron if I could get it. But anyway, I had to do what I did. So I uh, toasted the saffron for 20 seconds only. And uh, I actually counted to 20 while I was doing this. So you don't want, you don't want the saffron to burn. You can smell the flavours coming off on the steam. It was uh, quite amazing. Nice, nice uh, aroma. But uh, take it off the heat as soon as you can. And uh, set that all aside for the next step. There we go. So we're going to move the over to the mortar and pestle. So place half of the saffron that you just toasted into the mortar and pestle and grind that into a powder. You see my pestle action there. Or is that the mortal? That's the mortar. <laughs> the pestle, I think, is the bowl. Or is it pestle? I don't know. Anyway, so set that aside for later use. In fact, later use is right now. So once your milk has come up to temperature, just take uh, half a cup of the milk, which is 125 mils, and add that to the powder and just mix that well. And it goes a really, really dark orange color there, as you can see. So just swirl that around, get all the powder dissolved into your milk. Okay, 
Okay, I think that's enough mixing, Gav. Just leave it. Okay, good. All right, back over to the milk again. And it is at temperature, which is great. So I'm just taking uh, the thermometer out there and just give it a quick stir to get the cream that's floated to the top back into the milk again. And then we're going to add the starter cultures. Now remembering that we needed two starter cultures for this cheese, we're going to add in the uh, Flora Danica and the Thermophilic starter culture. The reason we're using the Flora Danica is not for the aroma, but more so for the uh, strains of culture within it that produce a little bit of gas so the texture of the cheese will be a little bit more open than you would say see for a cheddar or something like that and there goes in the Floridanica there the first one was the thermophilic there we go So we're going to cover that and we're going to allow the starter cultures to rehydrate for five minutes. So stir in the starter cultures. It's using a top to bottom stirring action there. Just make sure they're well incorporated within the milk. I usually give this a stir for about a minute. So once the starter cultures are thoroughly mixed through, we're going to cover the milk and allow it to ripen for 60 minutes at 27 degrees Celsius, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's quite a long ripening time. So 60 minutes later, we're going to give it a quick stir, just put that cream back in there again. And we're going to add in the saffron infused milk that we prepared earlier. So just pour that lovely dark orange colour in there. Now I did, uh, there was a bit left in the uh, pestle, so I put a little bit of water and then put that through. So then stir your milk thoroughly to make sure it's well mixed. And look at that colour change, it's amazing. Put your thermometer back on because we're going to do another ripening stage. Just check the temperature there. It's crept up a little bit, but that's okay. So we're now going to heat the milk up to 35 degrees Celsius and 95 Fahrenheit. The first ripening time, the temperature was perfect for the Floridanica. This temperature is more suited for the thermophilic starter culture. Okay, so we've got to the target temperature, or close enough, there we go, yep, 35, perfect. So there's a seconding, second ripening time, and we're going to allow that to ripen for 30 minutes at 35 degrees Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. I'm just taking off the heat because I know that my little steam bath increases the heat over time. So just check the temperature again, yep, close enough to 35. I'm going to add the calcium chloride. Now I did this out of shot before I checked the temperature like a silly duffer. But anyway, so we're adding the rennet right now. So we have added the calcium chloride before the rennet. So give that a good stir, no more than a minute. Uh, you don't want to wreck the coagulation action. So then cover the milk and allow it to set for 45 minutes at 35 Celsius, 95 Fahrenheit. So 
So just check for a clean break. Uh, now if you don't get a clean break at this stage, then just wait another 10 minutes and then check it again. But that looks pretty good. So using my trusty curd harp, I'm going to cut the curds into 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes. So that was the verticals now I'm doing the, sorry that was the horizontals now I'm doing the verticals uh, with my new vertical curd harp. And that looks like it's working quite well. It's a bit of a crazy method, but it seems to work okay for me. Perfect, no big ones. Cubes, that is. Okay, so let's tap that off. I'm going to cover that up now. And we're going to let it heal for five minutes. So five minutes later, you'll see a fair bit of whey on the top there. But that's normal. Just giving a, a gentle lift. Move the curds just to see that they're all cut. You don't want to go like a bull at a gate uh, first up, just in case the curds are a little bit fragile. So very gently, just moving them as you can see there. Now if there are any large cubes, then just cut them with the edge of your spoon as necessary as you can see me doing there okay so I'm going to gently stir the curds now for 10 minutes and this just helps expel some more whey and makes the curd firmer so that's 10 minutes later and you can see that the curd size has shrunk yeah, a little bit, which is good. So just cover that and allow the curds to settle for five minutes. Okay, so five minutes later, we're going to remove the way down to uh, five centimeters above the curds well, that's two inches but you can just see the curds through it so there I am just using a cup measure to dip off I'm not actually measuring how much I take off I'm just going to estimate the level of the curds Now you can make this easier by using a sieve and then dipping the cup into the sieve. That way you won't get any curds uh, in it. So I've reached the level there, so I'm just going to stir that for about a minute to break up the curds to make sure they don't mat. So we're going to cover that up again and we're going to allow that to settle for five minutes again. Okay, meanwhile, heat up five litres of water to 82 degrees Celsius. So you can see that's the pot in the distance there on the, uh, in the shot. So just remove the whey down to just above the curds this time. Probably get about another litre of whey out of that which is four cups. Yeah, I'm just checking the temperature. I think it's about 33, 33.1 this stage. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be cooking the curds and we're going to be adding hot water over the next 10 to 15 minutes to bring the temperature up to 39 degrees Celsius, 102 Fahrenheit. So you just add a little bit of a time there. I've added three cups initially. And then we give that a stir and we check the temperature. And I'm not sure what that says because I can't read it. 
there we go, 36.3. And add a couple more cups, give it a stir. Check the temperature, we're up to 38.0. Add a couple more. So A38.3. So I'm just adding half a cup at a time at the moment. There we go. So that's 39. Close enough, that'll do. Maybe a little bit more. <laughs> okay, 39.1. So we've reached the target temperature there, and we're going to stir that now for... 15 minutes. So we're still at the target temperature after the 15 minutes, which is uh, perfect. So we can stop stirring now. Thank goodness. So I'm going to cover that up and we're now going to allow the curds to settle for five minutes again. So we're going to remove the way down to just above the curds again. Now whatever you do, don't throw away the way uh, that I'm putting into the pot up behind. We will need that for uh, one of the steps coming up in the future. Okay, so now that we've dipped off the way as much as we can, we take this over to the draining area. And you can see I've got my saffron and my peppercorns all set up there. So drain the as much whey as you can without actually tipping the curds uh, into your basket. So just tip that through. If a little bit goes in, that's okay, but we're trying not to disturb the curd mass too much there. Leave that sitting on the side. So as you can see there, I've got the basket underneath the uh, cheesecloth uh, sitting on top of a colander. So just because I'm going to handle some curds, I've just sprayed some white vinegar on my hands to kill off any yeasts or bacteria and wiping them on a clean tea towel. Okay. So what we're going to do now is put a layer of curds into the basket. Not very thick, I'm thinking about two centimetres of a layer. There we go. So then we're going to add a fine layer of saffron. Just sprinkle that over the top. Try and stay away from the edges. Okay, then we're going to add another layer of curds. So breaking them up as you go along so you don't get any big chunks. And just try and cover up the layer of saffron that you previously laid down. Okay. He's getting a bit too excited. It's enough. Stop. Okay, so that's fully covered up the saffron now. Now we're going to add a layer of peppercorns and definitely try and keep away from the edges because you don't want any of the peppercorns showing through on the rind. Um, it can cause infections in the cheese if the rind is broken. So then add another layer of curds. Just to cover up the peppercorns. And notice that I've kept the, my left hand there dry, so it's easier to m manipulate the saffron and the, um, the peppercorns. So I'm only putting curds in the basket with my right hand. So add another layer of saffron. And there's a closer shot there. And then 
put another layer of curds over the top and some peppercorns I'm trying to stay away from the edge I'm clumsy and then add a layer of curds and then the remaining peppercorn uh, saffron sorry getting carried away there and then the last of the peppercorns and then top that off with a layer of the curds and that should be the last of the curds seems to have worked out quite well there and that was a silly thing to do because all the uh, peppercorns came back up I had to poke them down with my finger okay so fold the cloth over and then put the follower on top and we're going to get ready for pressing so let's take that over to your trusty cheese press I'm going to press it fairly lightly at uh, 4 kilograms or 8 pounds for 30 minutes meanwhile that way that you reserved we're going to heat that up to 80 degrees celsius or 172 fahrenheit and we're going to add in uh, half a tablespoon sorry half a teaspoon teaspoon half a teaspoon of salt stir that through and then give that a mix to make sure that dissolves so we're basically making ricotta here um, so once it's at the temperature we're going to add quarter of a teaspoon quarter to a half a teaspoon of citric acid dissolved in quarter of a cup of water and that will release all the proteins and leave that a little bit and the ricotta comes to the top so we scoop that into a basket now I could have used a sieve I probably would have got a little bit more there but just doing the best I can with what I had at the time the yield I got out of this was probably about 150 grams of ricotta which wasn't a lot But it was lovely on toast for breakfast the next morning. Okay, so as the heat was turned off when the ricotta formed, we're just going to put the cheese, the saffron infused cheese, in its basket into the warm way. So make sure that you've removed the cheese from the cheese cloth and all there is is the cheese in the basket. So you'll see that the temperature there is about 68, maybe 69 so I was aiming for around about 70 degrees and what this will do this will heat the cheese up to an internal temperature of about 45 degrees Celsius to 50 and that helps the thermophilic starter culture work so we're going to leave the cheese in the way for about three hours and after about an hour you'll see that the cheese floats to the top a bit like uh, making halloumi so the heat's off by the way this is now cooling down the way is cooling down so after the uh, three hours we remove the whey uh, sorry the cheese from the whey and we just let it sit on the drainer for uh, 15 hours and you can get rid of that whey or use it in your garden there's not much protein left in it because we've made ricotta out of it already but you can use it for all sorts of things so we can turn it now initially and then just uh, pop that back in the basket then turn it after about two hours just so it forms its shape so after the 15 hours this is the next day for me we're going to remove the cheese from the basket and we're going to brine it for six hours just during the salt that was, was coming out of the brine there so pop the cheese into the brine now sprinkle a layer of salt if it floats like that if you haven't got a little plastic thing to keep it under there we go so leave that for six hours but at the three hour mark what we're going to do is we're just going to flip it over so it's easily uh, evenly salted As you can see, I wasn't very good with the peppercorns. There's some showing in the rind. 
but uh, I'll just have to deal with that if any mold grows on it. So after it's been brined, we're going to move it to a, a ripening box. Let's place it on the mat in there. Just allows any of the brine to drip off. There we go. So sitting nicely on the mat in the box. Okay, so now there's been many requests for me to weigh the cheese at this stage. So the pre-aging weight is 983 grams or 2.17 pounds. So a fairly good cheese for 10 litres of milk. It's about a 10% yield. So we're going to ripen the cheese at 10 to 13 degrees Celsius, 50 to 55 Fahrenheit at 80% relative humidity for three months and turn it weekly for even ripening. Looks pretty good. So make sure that if you get any mold growth, then just wipe that off with a simple brine solution. Okay, back to Gav. So quite a unique process, as you saw. It's a great little cheese. I really did get a little bit complicated uh, through the middle there with draining and all that sort of stuff, but uh, hopefully you managed to get through that and uh, we'll be able to make this wonderful uh, saffron infused cheese. If anybody knows the name, the real name of this cheese, then uh, please leave a, a comment below and that'll be fantastic. Uh, it's always good to know the names of one's cheese instead of just a generic saffron infused cheese. So thanks to Jim Wallace for letting me butcher your recipe and bring it down to a 10 litre recipe. Uh, I really appreciate you putting up those cheese making recipes up online. Anyway, curd nerds, don't forget that you can find the, all the ingredients and equipment and supplies over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au and you don't forget that uh, the show is supported by patrons either by YouTube memberships or on Patreon. The links are in the description below. Well thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.